Hello, I'm Bonnie Greer. Welcome to the British Museum. The museum first opened to the public on the 15th of January, 1759, in a 17th century mansion on the site of today's buildings. Entry was free and given to all studious and curious persons, and the British Museum is still free to visitors today. With the exception of two world wars, the British Museum has remained open ever since, increasing its visitor hours and moving from 5,000 visitors a year to a staggering six million visitors a year today. This makes the British Museum one of the most popular visitor attractions in the world. Since its first appearance in Bloomsbury, the museum has continued to evolve, creating new buildings and spaces that reflects its role in London, the UK, and internationally. The classic core of the museum was designed by Sir Robert Smirk, and by 1857, both the quadrangular building and the reading room have been constructed. Additions and changes to the British Museum have continued since, and in December 2000, the covered great court designed by Foster and Partners was opened by Her Majesty the Queen. One of the earliest objects in the collection is this cutting tool made by one of the first humans and comes right up to date. The museum works on exhibitions, skills sharing, and research with many partners. Behind the scenes, the museum and its staff are internationally regarded for their skills and knowledge in areas such as conservation, science, and research. The staff can serve and analyze every imaginable material from all periods of human history. However, the facilities for these dedicated and highly professional people are poor. In recent decades, the British Museum has been instrumental in advancing conservation techniques and scientific research in many areas. But some of the conditions we ask our scientists and conservatives to work in have barely changed in 50 years and are thoroughly outdated. The limitation of these premises means that the museum cannot deliver the quality of care, education, learning and engagement programs that it would like to. Because many of the facilities for conservation are scattered around the site, some indeed off-site, rare, priceless and highly vulnerable objects often have to make long and difficult journeys around the museum. Just listen to some of the people who work here. Our basic problem down here is that we're in the basement of the Georgian building and we've had to try and put a world-class conservation lab into an area that was designed for Georgian servants. As you can see, we've got some fantastic radiography equipment. Um, unfortunately, we're very restricted in the amount of space we have. Um, with the Egyptian mummies, we can do animal mummies, we can do child mummies, but there's no way we can get an adult mummy through and into this room, so it's not possible for us to look at those. These spaces aren't um, ideal. We've got fantastic analytical equipment in here, um, but the, um, the spaces are cramped, so um, with so many of us trying to work in here, it, it makes life very difficult. Well, here we are in the basement area. Obviously, we're limited to the size of objects that can come down to us because, as you can see from the hoist here, it's pretty small, so large objects couldn't even come to us. Our ability to conserve objects and the techniques we're able to apply, the research methodology, have all increased over the last few years. But one of our major concerns is that we often have to move objects from one studio to the laboratory in order to examine them. And this can often mean going through the backyard, and sometimes that's very worrying, moving fragile objects. The Organic Artifacts Conservation section has 12 staff. Um, two of whom usually work in this studio, which is the main site. We have ten other colleagues who are an hour and a half to two hours away by public transport. So for us, a new facility where we're all able to work together will be marvellous. In early 2006, the British Museum developed a master plan to review the operation of the Bloomsbury site. It was clear that bringing together the conservation science, storage, and research work of the museum was vital. In addition, the creation of a new purpose-built area for special exhibitions would provide real benefit. For example, it would return the reading room to a more appropriate use 
and solve many of the critical issues around circulation. It would also mean access for exhibition objects would be massively improved. The master plan identified an area within the museum site that could accommodate the requirements of a 21st century museum. The area identified is landlocked within the site and is filled with poor quality and temporary buildings. The site only touches the boundary of the museum in Montague Place, where two 1970s replica Georgian houses currently exist. So, by spring 2009, the British Museum had developed plans for a new building. This new project would accommodate the vital behind-the-scenes work of the museum, upon which much of its international reputation is built. The project would also provide a purpose-built special exhibition center with greatly improved access around the public areas of the museum. Unfortunately, those initial plans were not granted permission by the local authority. The museum listened carefully to the issues they raised, and with its architects, Rogers, Sterk, Harbour and Partners, undertook a major consultation program. Organizations, local businesses, groups, individuals and residents have all been consulted to ensure that a new approach would be welcomed by the majority of people. The new World Conservation Exhibition Center has been designed to provide first-class facilities for both visitors and staff. Part of the building has now been sited underground to provide a stable environment for equipment that is sensitive to vibration or requires darkness to operate. This has allowed the museum to provide an uninterrupted view from the valued arched window for the first time in over 25 years. The main buildings have been reduced in width by one meter to provide extra space between the old buildings and the new and allowing more light to penetrate. On Montague Place, this reduction in scale has brought the new building facade one meter back from the street scene, so providing a better viewing line. Research by the museum means that the potential of a green roof may be possible on the new building, but a pilot will be established first to ensure that it will cause no damage to the museum's highly valued organic collection. This, along with other biodiversity measures such as beehives and swallow boxes and a new sustainable approach to energy use across the museum, means that the World Conservation Exhibition Center will achieve high levels of sustainability and energy efficiency. To access these wonderful new facilities and to improve visitor flow around the museum, openings will be reinstated in the Great Court. These will fit into the profile of the 1930s windows that used to be a feature of the North Elevation and will take pressure off the current access to the northern side of the museum and the congested Egyptian Sculpture Gallery. So, let's take a quick tour of the New World Conservation Exhibition Center and listen to some of the comments it's attracting. I think the British Museum is the most important institution we have in this country's culture. Now we're attending to the real life of the museum. It's a laboratory of possibility. I wouldn't be a sculptor if it wasn't for the objects in this room. From a volunteer's perspective, when things are very busy, queues can be very long. These new facilities will help greatly for our visitors and also help with safety. The new facilities will actually mean that we've had an opportunity to design the storage and the logistics spaces to the, exactly the, the standards we require to make sure that we look after the objects the best we can. A lot of the work that we do here is collaborative projects, so I'm really excited about the fact that we can all get in the same building and actually have the opportunity to talk to each other every day. I've been living for over 10 years here on the corner of Bedford Square and Montague Place watching the British Museum develop into a wonderful institution. The museum has consulted extensively with me over the past several months. Uh, I'm very, very pleased with the way this has gone, and the present proposal uh, meets every requirement that I can think of. The British Museum has been constantly evolving since its first opening to the public in 1759 always adapting to the needs of its visitors 
its staff, and the unparalleled collection in its care. The British Museum and its local community are proud of its history and its international reputation for excellence. The new World Conservation and Exhibition Center will allow the British Museum to continue to evolve and to fulfill its role in the 21st century. We hope that you'll support our plans. <laughs>